Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, just to start this uh, quick show of hands, I'm really curious to see who has ever used a dial-up connection to a BBS. Awesome. Great. So I've got some people who are probably going to appreciate that. So I'm Sasha. I'm from Hamburg, Germany. It's my first time presenting at Nanox, so please be gentle and excuse my English. I'm doing as best as I can. I have recently become a BBS sysop last year, which is kind of unusual these days. It doesn't have to do anything with IP, and I want to talk about that because I hope someone's going to find it interesting. Uh, you probably remember, as some of you do, uh, this is how it looked like dialing into a BBS in the 80s with an acoustic coupler um, at 300 baud, if you were lucky. Um, this was how it looked in my case in 92. The picture is uh, courtesy of my mom. Uh, you know what, let's move on. Uh, so when dialing into a BBS at 300 baud, this was all text-based for the younger ones, and this is how it looked, kind of slow, just to get an idea. Um, BBSs hit their peak around 96, uh, became unpopular when the internet became popular, of course. It was a great place to meet, exchange, and so on and so on. Uh, there were even file transfers using, using X modem, or the much more improved Y modem, or Z modem, People remember, very happy to hear that. <laughs> uh, and one of the most popular BBSs in Germany was in Hamburg, my, my hometown. It was called Tex. It was probably indeed the biggest one in Germany with more than 50 ports. Seems, seems low number of ports, but it was privately run by a guy who wrote it in 1984, Thomas Schewe, who wrote it in MS Basic, was compiled in, in Quick Basic and, and became really a hotspot for enthusiastic people. Uh, this is growth rate ending in uh, 1995, and after that, stuff declined, of course. It ran on a Series 1 with two 1.2 uh, megabyte disk drives. Later, a hard disk was added, running on a Tandon PCA70. I don't know if that rings any bells in here with a novel network server centrally. And then at its peak, it basically had a 486 computer per port with a modem sitting on top of that, which had an ISDN connection, ISDN extremely popular in Germany, not anywhere else, I believe. And later he added support for Telnet and SSH. And this is how it looked at some point in the past, with a novel network server somewhere below the workbench and all these ports on top of it, or these, these computers for every, for every port. It took a lot of uh, electricity, and but it was all his hobby, basically. I became a user myself in 1990, with my 300 baud modem that I soldered, um, very happy about it, met a lot of great people. And it really had a huge influence on my career choice, you know, like going into electronic communications and later he, he added support for PPP, dial-up internet and so on and so on. And, you know, all these working with this kind of really analog stuff was really impressive to me back then. And unfortunately, by 2010, it was reduced to two dial-up ports with SSH and Telnet to connect to because nobody basically used it anymore. Every now and then someone showed up, but not really using it at all. However, Thomas kept this BBS running until his sudden death last year, which I learned about last summer. And uh, the BBS was almost 39 years old when he died and passed away. And I heard about his passing later, as I said. So but the BBS was still running. And I haven't talked to him for many years before his death, but I really wanted to find out where the hardware ended up and what, what's going to happen with it, because I felt like someone's going to just go there one day and trash everything and, you know, just throw it away, not knowing what he was dealing with. So, yeah, so I believed it was in his house in, in Hamburg um, and just, you know, being unmolested. So I did some research. I found his heir. Two nephews of his who didn't know anything about IT. They are medical doctors. And uh, I reached out and one of them agreed that we could go there at some point, find the hardware in his, his basement or whatever. Nobody really knew about this and just see what we're going to find and maybe do with it. Uh, until then, it, it took a few weeks when slowly things started falling apart. You know, if things are not maintained at all um, by anyone, um, things stop working, so the BBS became a little bit unstable, I didn't know why, and I knew that the website also suddenly stopped working, and he had some email services that stopped working, and so I had to find out that there was an external server in some hosting company that he, he worked with, and uh, I had to do some root recovery to break into a Linux server, which worked by with a recovery letter on postal mail, 
that his nephew took out of his letterbox. So it's uh, actually too easy to, to break into stuff these days, at least that way. But, you know, just show up and wait for the postman. Um, but eventually solved things. So the website was working again. And then at some point, I had the chance to, um, you know, add some comments on the website. This is German, of course, but you get an idea of how old this stuff was uh, just looking at the website. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, that's, that's an important point. Uh, all of his domain names, like text.de and so on and so on, were hosted at um, my employer's uh, IPHHs um, uh, under a contract in, in our company. So I was able to just grab them and revive them and change the DNS and so on and so on to keep things working. And just a few weeks later, I actually went to his house with his nephew uh, first time, which was kind of strange to go in there knowing that uh, an old friend had just passed away a couple of months earlier. And I can just go in there now and try to find old hardware in his house somewhere working. So I found this basement, which I found really impressive. There were servers around and cables everywhere and quite a good amount of spare hardware um, of different times of, I don't know if anyone remembers that kind of modems. Uh, again, ISDN modems, which makes it a little bit difficult for me to bring them online again because ISDN connections are not sold anymore in, in Germany, but uh, we get to that later. So I identified boxes. I found a Linux server uh, that was like in front of a Windows 11 um, where text was running in, in DOS boxes. Really interesting. I, I grabbed the important stuff, which I thought was important, and I moved everything to our lab. This is his nephew uh, giving credits to the time he took to to get me in there and uh, help me carrying out all this stuff that I needed. So I broke into that Linux server. We know how this works. I signed, assigned new IP addresses and basically brought everything online again at our lab. And there are still those two modems that are directly attached to that uh, Windows box and everything is running in DOS boxes. And I renumbered everything and now the it, text is working again. So people log in. I, I promoted it a little bit in the LinkedIn group of old enthusiastic users and that's that's actually really fun. I have some open issues, like still struggling to understand the whole underlying infrastructure. You know, it's like really non-standard basic code. It's some, some piece of it you can see here, I found in some backups, uncompiled code. Uh, I'm still lacking ISDN lines, so I'm wondering if I should just get analog modems, which is easier to connect to, or putting the ISDN lines back on the pre-card of an Astra server. I, I don't know, still struggling about that. But you can log in using SSH. It's working so far so good. If anyone wants to, you know, feels like, oh, basic. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's make it work and analyze the binary database files. Um, yeah, approach me, be happy to. I expect no one's going to show up. That's how it is. So uh, we recently had a little user meeting with three users online, having uh, met in the chat room. Really cool. So what, what are my goals, actually? I want to, or I believe at least, you know, talking about old stuff like these things might teach younger engineer generations something about communication things. I remember some, some point at the office where one of our younger guys came in and said, like, hey, can anyone tell me what a null modem cable is? I was like, you know, come on, close the door. Let's light up a campfire and we're going to talk about old times. Pass me the guitar. Um, so my goal is that I want to keep text running until it's 42 years old. You know, 42, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and so on and so on. December 26th. And then shut it down. Um, find a resting place for the hardware. Document everything. Maybe make the code open source. I don't know yet. But that's what I'm working on. Like document his life achievement because I think building this and keeping it running for 39 years on his own, but not, you know, getting any help basically is really amazing. So that's where we are. I say thank yous for all the users that even still use text. Um, and uh, his nephew for making this happen. And that's him. Rest in peace, Thomas. Thanks for everything. Happy to answer any questions, of course. OK, thank you. Hi, uh, oh, sorry. Tail, uh, Salesforce. So you had three users for your user meeting. How many regular users are you getting? Well, um, we see about four to five logins per week okay. of people just logging in seeing the opening the bulletin boards for people writing greetings or saying, hey, great, this is still working, and logging out. So it's not really useful for anyone. 
<laughs> and uh, so SSH access, uh, are any of them dialing in or is it all SSH from the rest of the network? Yeah, that's the issue. Dialing in doesn't work right now. So I want to take the next one or two weeks maybe to make that work again. So I hope. Okay. And then my final question is, do you know, does this represent the last BBS on Earth? or It doesn't. It, okay. It doesn't. I have actually learned that there is now some um, some people opening new BBSs again. Uh, at least in Germany, I've seen that. And I don't know why the hell they would do that. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's happening. So yeah, okay. a Thank few you. of them are still left. MJ Meta, why 42 years? Uh, you know, magic number in IT, uh, the answer to all questions. And uh, that that's basically it. So I, I thought about bringing it to 40 years. And then someone said, like, you know, make it to 42 years. And, go, and that's also awesome. Go for 50. Oh, man, I have a day job. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone.